Hello and welcome to all the UPSC aspirants in the Abhimanyu IS. My name is Pravesh Watts and I welcome you in the issue analysis series where I have a very potent question for the UPSC exam which is about the democracy. So, today we will talk about democracy is good or not. What are the pros, what are the cons, what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages of the democracy which will definitely going to help you into your polity paper of the mains and the poll science option of your mains. So let's see. And those students who wants to join the Abhimanyu IS for any course, we are giving multiple courses into the Abhimanyu IS to deal the UPS exam. So please have a look on this chart. Now let's see. The question is, is democracy good or not? So if we call it good and say yes, it is the best form of government, then why it is considered as the best form of government? So one by one, we'll be looking at it. Let's see. It is the highest form of government, addresses the central challenges of politics, which is the existence of rival views and interests within the same society. This line signifies that we under the society are having the problems of rivalness, rivalness to grab the resources. And democracy is considered as a proper and the best practicable mechanism to deal this challenge and to provide on the basis of need and on the basis of your actions in the society. So this is more highest form of government, the reason being it provides a systematized allocation of resources to the people and in a very calm, in a very peaceful, in a very harmonious manner. Second, it prevents bloodshed and violence and brings peace and stability, which are the two important pillars of the democracy, which runs on the peace and stability principles and avoids the violence, the bloodshed and the arms. Third, this occurs because democracy relies on open debate, persuasion and compromise. Democracy is having some sort of association with the liberalism which have a very important principle which is toleration and debate. Everything solution lies in the debates and the discussions rather than fighting and putting the callers and you know taking the callers in our hands. Then. People with rival views or competing interests are encouraged to find a way to live together in relative harmony. This is the very important crux of the democracy that it finds a way in the mid as to give you a platform on which both the rival parties can at the same time live in harmony, in not in compartmentalization. So it avoids compartmentalization and tries to bring peace, harmony, stability and wisdom into the society. Then it is a universal value favors human rights, fundamental rights, absolute rights that belongs to all the people, right? So in our earlier videos, we have discussed about what is civil right, what is natural right, what is fundamental right, what is human right, and what are the relations amongst them. So please have a look on those videos if you want to learn more about that. Then it provides the basic entitlements, like we have the fundamental rights, human rights, to shape the decisions that affect our own life which is the right to self-rule. So in democracy, we get the right to self-rule by providing a representation to someone to govern us. Then, it prevents tyranny of the government, it prevents tyranny of the legislative laws, provide, prevents the arbitrariness of the executive actions of the governments, and it checks, it puts a check on them and more effective constraint on power other than democracy. So there is no more sort of democracy which we have apart from it which can prevent so much effectiveness on the constraints on the government. Then because democratic rule operates through a mechanism of accountability which ultimately allow the public to kick the rascal out. So this is a very important term those students who have the UPSC Paul Science optional and the polity part please remember this term to substantiate your answers of the optional Paul Science as well as of the polity in the GS2. So, it, kick, it provides the accountability as a principle on which the people counter questions their representatives on a time and are able to kick the rascals out or the rascals, those politicians who have not worked, done, have, who have not done their work properly and have cheated their electorate. Then democratic societies are therefore not only the most stable societies in the world but also the societies in which citizens enjoy the widest realm of freedom. 
in democracy only like the US like the India we have a number of freedoms we have number of sense of enjoyments we have number of platforms where we can see the happiness and the wisdom but if you consider some of the Southeast Asian countries some of the African countries some of the Central Asian countries you can draw an image as to what is the importance of freedom and how the freedom is enshrined and and you know enjoyed into India and into the democratic countries in comparison of the non-democratic countries. The people's life in those countries are you know, really hell. And if you compare with the countries like India and the US where the democracy is fulfilling its interest. Now if you look at a different pillar or different side of the coin where we are considering democracy as not best. So what could be the reasons of calling democracy as not best form of government? Let's see one by one. It is being biased in the favor of conflicts and promotes disharmony. It is criticized by a number of philosophers like Karl Marx we had, who says that in the government, government is a machinery of the, of the bourgeoisie or the capitalist class, which takes the interest of the capitalist class or the dominant class in the society, whether we have the caste, whether we have the region, whether we have the communal interest, so on and so forth. So, it is criticized because of this reason that it, at major point of time it promotes the interest of the dominant section and it creates disharmony into the people. Then, because democracy pr promotes electoral battle between the opponents who are encouraged to condemn one another, rather than what should have happened in the democracy is the proper countering questions of the, of the rival parties rather than throwing the chairs and the chapels on each other's which we often see into the democratic countries. Exaggerating their faults and denying their achievements. It is also often seen into the democratic societies and into the current democratic societies that if some polit political party or a particular party has done some sort of good achievements, still their achievements is criticized by the parties who are their rival parties. So this is the fallout of the democracy we should say and I, I will write this fallout of democracy where the, the achievements are neglected to a large extent by the rivaling interest. Then democracy in the developing world like India may make things worse than better as we are seeing that less productivity of the Indian parliament less productivity of the governance, less productivity of the debates, less productivity in the, elect, in, the, in the election process. So these are the major fallouts into the Indian democracy or the developing democracies. Then democratization or the process of establishing democracies called democratization may therefore deepen tribal, regional, ethnic tensions and strengthen the tendency towards charismatic leadership thereby breeding authoritarianism. We have seen in the number of developing countries, even in our countries, that sometimes what happens that rather than a proper form of democracy, the tribal, regional and ethical, which are the regional tensions or I would say that regional patriotism dominates over the national patriotism and which hurts the unity, integrity and sovereignty of your country. And sometimes it also happens that any particular leader who has a charisma or who has a charismatic personality, he tries to dominate to a large extent that it establishes authoritarianism over the democracy. And it is a major threat to the democracy when such kind of things takes place in any particular country, whether it is a developed country or it is a developing country. Then democracy is considered as westernization or the western concept rather universally applicable because I just mentioned that the democracy's ideas which are liberalism, toleration, they are coming from the western only, right? But it is the, it is the image which has been created by the western societies because the toleration which is practiced in the Asian countries is nowhere. If we, if we see the history of India which, is, which has seen a number of invasions by a number of dictators, so we can see that who, who the country apart from India will be so much tolerable. So we are democratized from the, since the ages, right? So this is the criticism which is, the, which is given by the Asian values and the Asian political scientists and the Asian political philosophers. The democracy is considered as a westernization by the western philosophers. So this is a blame on the Asian values. As it is based on the values that assumptions that they betray the cultural biases of western heartland. Example, individualism, right? Individualism is to 
promote and to favor the individual interest over the societal interest. Because in West what happens that the materialism and individualism is, has such kind of profound impact on the society where the individual is more considered as superior than the society and in the Asian countries especially in India where we have the religious spiritual values and the values and the uh, you know values of obedience and toleration it is considered that individual is subservient to the society because society is the collection of individuals and society is the collection of all wisdoms of the individuals so we have a very broad rather than the compartmentalization concept of the western countries of democracy then western style democracy it spread sometimes imposed and always encouraged to the known western world and it is considered as a form of cultural imperialism Again and again, I'm reiterating the same thing that those students of the UPSC, Paul Science Optional and the GS2, please have a look on these important terms which I'm telling here because these are the crux of the exam. Cultural imperialism. So democracy as a form of government is also a tool which is being used by the Western countries to establish to their cultural imperialism or I would say the hegemony of the West on the entire world in the form of spreading the values of democracy as per their own conception as per their own demand in the form of cultural imperialism and the last thing is in democracy wisdom and experience tend to be ignored because wisdom which is called the ultimate happiness and the experience which is also considered as a positive value tend to be ignored because the view of well educated minority are swamped by less well educated majority which we see into the elections process where the number of parties comes into the power not only on the not on the basis of rational and not on the basis of educated sections view but rather than by the collection of illiterate and a majority of the illiterate views and they form the government and they dictate the policies in the form of their own interest only so these are the major fallouts of the democracy which i've just mentioned to you i hope you understand all the meanings all the terms Thank you so much. We'll meet on the next day with the next topic for the UPSC mains and the prelims. Thank you so much.